Hello and welcome back to Pillars. We're just about to go to the old city and uh, see what the hell is going on there. Perhaps save a guy. Uh, that could be the good deed for the day. A rickety metal cage swings over an abyss. Your clothes billow with a foul wind from below and faint screams and roars echo from the depths. Still, you can make out no details from this distance. While well, we're going down. <clears throat> You step into a jouncing cage, the door slams shut and your descent begins with the rattle of chains. As your eyes adjust to the gloom, you begin to make out crumbling ruins and shadows flickering between them. The cage comes to rest with a groan. This is only the third part of the city we are exploring. There's still at least... No, there's still like three more. So this is a pretty big city. Nakataka. Still yet to talk to the queen. <laughs> this could be another big area as well. This is the old city, so to speak. It's more like a ruins now apparently so beneath the city each layer of nekataka is more pungent than the last exactly will we find anyone alive here because this is just a wall of dead bodies how could anyone be alive here oh we're sickened Will it go away? It will, apparently. Waterfalls echo in the distance below. So, second is gone. Scallywags. Uh oh. Cap. Yeah. Must meet. Can I just blow them up? That was a miss? Come on! Okay, fireball number two. Clearly not gonna be a miss, right? Preston and Rodcast. Can I just do a... Uh, essential Phantom? Good help. Behold me, mother. The only punches. I reap what I sow. Oh, this is not the time. Uh oh. You're gonna hit your teammates. Maybe I need to modify the the condition. Why not? With the ability. Instead of, uh, well, I'm going with the default AI, and the default AI just thinks that, oh, it's not next to you? Chilling fog, baby. His body has been savaged by many claws and fangs. A cloud of essence hangs over it. You recognize it as belonging to Botaro, the man you saw lowered from the gulat earlier. His soul re remnants, remnant pauses with urgency. That's really his soul. You prepare yourself for the now familiar jolt and feel of... Uh... Uh, of... of well... What? Feel yourself pulled into one of his memories. You are being dragged toward the cage, but you are not looking at it or the darkness below. Soon there will be nothing else for you. Overseer Hitenga is holding the marked coin. Uh, Sulanet and glaring at you. You already tried explaining yourself, but it's no use. He knows where you got it. He tucks it into his pocket. Instead, you look at Biha, furious and heartbroken, where she stands beyond the guards. There's something you need to tell her, but she's too so far 
receding farther by the second. Recall what you need to tell her. You're standing in front of a man. His dark, wizened face reminds you of old leather, but a delicate work of embroidery uh, rests in his lap. He holds out a purse with long, fine fingers. I'm taking it. It's heavy. It's probably more money than you've earned in your entire life. You try not to let this show on your face. You know what to do. The crime lord nods at you. Please remind me. You will meet our mutual associate near the Adra Mill. She will give you a package. Pay her and bring this package to the Undercroft. He watches you for understanding before he continues. My people are particular about security, but show them uh, the Sulnat and they will let you pass. You pat your pocket for the marked coin. Yet, yeah, it's, it's still there. You leave the lair of uh, Darrell the lean and zip uh, through the narrows, past the swef chewing guards, left at the poor vein section and left again to the gullet. Your hands are shaking and you're remembering the rumor Biha told you about of a merchant captain at the tavern. The money is heavy in your hands. It's a risk. But you realize you already decided to take it. You approach the tavern with your heart in your mouth, realizing that you can't just walk in there holding Darrow's purse. You need to hide it. Fortunately, the rubble around you offers plenty of hiding places. When no one is looking, you clear some stones out uh, of one corner and hide the purse beneath them. There. You come back for it uh, once you made your deal with this Ratayan. You're almost starting to feel better about it too. As Batara walks into the to the tavern, the memory fades and you find yourself once more looking at his corpse. Come along now. I'll guide you through the wheel. Sorry's lantern clicks slowly as she drags it through the clustered es essence, uh, harvesting the lost soul. Well, I can't blame the guy. He wanted to get out. Sure, no problem. What is this? You got a lot of money, and he used it. Kinda used that, but we do know that the guards just killed him for nothing, basically. Oh, sure. I suppose a lot story is that, and it's it's something that you need we need to consider is that uh, assuming we are not only acting out of our own self interest, but actually want to make a, a difference, is that do we understand the situation? Are we ready to make a, a change that it's actually going to be positive? Because it's tempting to go down the violent path, kill a guy, but uh, is that really gonna be helpful in the long run? Maybe we need to blow that up. Oh. Why are you trying to charm it, you idiot? So, Sigil of Nightmares? Uh oh. Die. Die. <laughs> I'm not a frog in the figurehead. It's immune, so we tried to charm it. Let's run back. After Let's 
blow up some ghosts. Double explosion. And you might need to do a heal. Make it double. Okay. Don't need to use that. Why are you trying to use that? No need. Let's make a phantom. Right the way out there. What the hell are you doing? What? How did you manage to end up there? Let's go. I'm more impressed that he took no damage whatsoever. I'll just take down the right. Yep. My fingers be fat. Yep. Take it. But they're ever charmed. Don't charm it. Take down the essence battery. Smart, we took some damage there. No. This thing isn't doing the job. This is annoying. To unlock it. Sure. This is this set? Can we go up? Who the hell are you? Lone survivor? Wait! I'm not looking for trouble. Not more, I mean. And I've not got a weapon on you. See? He raises his hands to show his sword is sheet. It's just, you're the first body I've bumped into in days. That's actually breathing. I mean, could it be you're delving for forgotten treasures? Same as me? I guess you can say that. His boots are slick with grime, his clothes are filthy and rumpled from several days of air, and his neck and hands are smeared in places with mud. A peck rests at his heels, empty enough to have fluffed into itself. Slightly carries no more than his dwindling supplies. No offense, but you're not looking or smelling so good. He licks his cracked lips, flashing crooked front teeth. I'm loath to admit it, but look, I'm too desperate not to. I have found not a single trinket and no end to this pit since I first crawled down. I thought to follow the rivers out, but the caves are crawling with grubs. All right, how long have you wandered down here? I packed provisions enough for two weeks. Started rationing when things looked grim after the first odd days. I, I don't know beyond that. His eyes, the ripped toe of his boot as he scuffs it against the stone beneath his feet. Andra's lure seems hardly worth it now. Suppose I fell for the bait though, didn't I? Fable. Temple full of treasures, in my ass. What was your escape plan when you first ventured into the pit? I scaled down from the cliffs, but midway, the rocks turned slick. He scratches at a patch of dried muck on the side of his neck. So there's no climbing back up. What else, then? Best bet's the rivers at the base of the pit. They flow beneath the outcrops, so they must dump into the sea. The trouble's been reaching the base. The western caves wind downward, but they're riddled, infested. Walking them's not been safe. 
Hmm. If I clear a path, I let you know. Right. Now wait here, and you'll return for me, won't you? He nods in answer to his own question, but a deep worry furrows across his brow. Wouldn't you just check? I'm so cursed. I think we need to rest. Can I rest? Hmm. Let's rest. Yeah, I was pretty cursed. Cave grub. Cave grub, you're with me now. Let's do a fireball. Fireball number two, taking out the burrow. Uh oh, cave grub rushing my back. Can you just do a heal? That's good, but this would be better. Die now. Whoa, they exploded. Let's go. It's crazy. Uh, retarget it. Sure, these cave grubs are hella dangerous. Didn't realize it. What? Why is it healing? Alright. Dead now. Yuck. They have nothing Next as well. Time, okay, let's rest again. Because why not? Let's get rid of the injuries. Wait a second. Sadi sways on her face. Feet, a low moan easing uh, from her throat. She rubs a thumb over uh, worry bitten lips. You feeling okay? Sweat trickles a line from her temple to drip from her chin. Her eyes are hazy, far off. Watcher. Yes? Slowly she swallows, throat uh, working to bring her voice back or to keep her meal down. It's nothing but awakened terror. Soon to pass. Have you dreamt about me again? She shudders hard, coming back to herself. You may want to aim away from our watcher there if it's gonna pass out of your mouth. <clears throat> Sorry, I know you're going through something there. Uh, you could call it something, all right. She tilts her head, uh, brow pinched as if uh, she can tell if uh, he's poking fun at her or not. Drape your arm over her shoulder and nestle her close. Ooh, classic move! Let's do it! She curls into the embrace, breathing a contented sigh against your chest before she pulls back. Watcher, don't... What? Her voice breaks slow and hoarse, and uh, her eyes dart to the right before she continues. You see those shambling corpses too? 
Yeah, very romantic. That's why I was making a move. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> At her hastily whispered words, the hair on the back of her, of your neck stands on end. You glance around just to be safe, but there is nothing to be seen. Nothing unusual anyway, even in the d direction Sod is staring. A fixed. You are really... <laughs> you really are addle-brained. What do you see? I see a body of stitched together parts and flayed flesh. It's got three heads and four stretched limbs. On each of its heads curves three white horns from above three blind eyes. The guy who cranes his neck and listens uh, with delight. So someone was playing puzzle. The beast is big as a mountain and shambling toward us beneath the sun turned black as slow. Her eyes roll skyward and she teeters uh, on her heels as if she's riding the cusp of a seizure. The lantern rattles in her grip. She exhales a, a sigh. I know it ain't really there. Okay. Lately, it's been getting worse. Some nights I wake sweaty and shaken. Other times, I'm already awake. You sure you wanna share this uh, moment right here? I got my eyes wide open, staring down the darkness. Watching one lantern after another flickering out. And every soul looks so ripe. Darn near rotten with a need for reaping. What? We can relight the lanterns of hell given enough time. All is not lost. You're being called to higher purpose, Sori. Embrace the harvest, the darkness of the fall. Uh, I say screw it. If that makes you uncomfortable... Doesn't matter. Uh, just, just leave it. What does that mean? Dark days are coming for Kithkind. When the last light of hell burns out, the final harvest will be upon us. The guy who rocks back on his heels, not nodding to himself. I think. I think we might all die out. A deep line crinkles between her brows. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, uh, just chin up, uh, sorry. But does Gon want me to stop it? Or to help? It doesn't matter, you gotta make up your own mind, that's the point. Obviously, you don't want to, uh, wipe out mankind. We can relight the lanterns of hell, give enough time, all is not lost. I sure hope you're right, Watcher. Because if you're wrong... Nervously, she jiggles her lantern, eyes lost in its flames. No, I know you're right. Gon's chosen me. Takehu drums his fingertips on his cheek as he hides a smile. So until I figure out what's needed of me, I'll do my darndest to help you on your path. She lifts her gaze to your face. We'll figure this out together. Sounds like you're mostly figuring it out yourself, with, with me not uh, much to say about it. Carefully, she slips her hand into yours. Ooh, your fingers easily entwine, palms pressing together so tight you can feel your heartbeats between you. Shoulders squared, she looks off into the distance. Is there anything we can do to alleviate your nightmares? Hmm. I'm carrying more souls than I've ever shepherded before. So I don't know that it'll work this time, but used to be. When the dreams were riding me hard, I'd cleanse my soul before gone. The guy who rocks back on his heels, nodding to himself. Now what does that mean? If we stop by the temple in Nekataka, I can perform the ritual. Please, I need the relief. It won't take more than a minute under Gon's statue, that's all. Done. Alright, fair enough. One minute? 
in a place we're going anyway? Girl, just just say it. Uh oh. We gotta take it out. Why are you trying to charm it? Wait a second, what is that? Yeah, we'll take it. What is in the middle? Temple ruins? Old city ruins? Okay, let's check out the temple ruins. You hear a faint melody near the statue. A, a cracked stone face rises from the pool. Let's leave. <laughs> let's leave and explore the whole area first. I have to. It is, it is the way to do it. What? I used the bloody torch. How could I not see uh, see what's going on still? Fresh boot prints stirred the mud. Interesting. Is there a way to get there? I don't even see how. So damn dark. Skudrak? Uh oh, don't blow yourself up. What? Why can't you reposition it? Do a heels. Do that and do a heels. Okay, we can do more fireballs. I don't feel so good. School Drax creature. Okay, you can just go with spirit shield. Do not die. Also, we can go for another heal. So, keep grubbing. I hear you. Oh, we need to take down the burrows. Cave Grubling, rest in peace. Oh, we have one who's friendly. Time to separate the chaff. Yeah, we're taking all of that. What is this? School drag nests? How big is this place? I don't be supposing we keep easy breezy wet tents. Okay, so what the hell? So this is where we came in. We have we can go to two places. Plus there is something in the middle. There's a guy over here watching, uh, waiting for some grubs to die. Why not? Spoiler: They're not gonna die that by themselves. A cracked stone face rises from the pool. Uh, lich lichens uh, clog the hollows under its brows and nostrils, and a pale glow plays along the undersides of its cheeks. Dive toward the light? More like inspect the pool. Actually, we need to leave. <laughs> Guys, come over here! This needs to be a team effort. Inspect the pool. As murky as it is, it's difficult to tell how deep it goes. You can barely see the statue's submerged shoulders. The rest of it shrouded is shrouded in darkness. Yet a smudge of light shines from the gloom. 
and you hear a faint musical sound from the depths. The melody ebbs and flows, rises and re recedes. Hmm. Dive toward the light. You dive. Ada leaps into the pool and swims down. The water is surprisingly warm with an oily texture and a uh, brackish flavor. Yet there's the paddles deeper, the water grows colder, the light in the depths become brighter and sharper, and a strange melody murmurs through the water. As the mysterious source grows closer, Muck clogs Ether's eyes and the strong current pushes back. Despite the effort, Ether fights through the current, sustained by a deep breath and strong lungs. Continue toward the light! Ether reaches the source of the light and music, a glowing conch in the statue's open hand. Music flows from it, as rich and deep as a baritone. Ether hovers above it, uh, lungs just beginning to ache. Take the conch and swim back up. At first the conch is stuck in place, with a little effort, Ether pries it from the statue's paw, it comes free with a pop, and the radiance and music fade. Ether pushes off from the statue and swims despite the pain swelling in his chest. Get the coordinate of waves from Takano Villa. And that kicks toward the, gim the dim glow of the surface. I have. Okay. I gained the coordinate of the depths that, that I was supposed to find somewhere else. This is a quest item. It has no value other than that. And there emerges and climbs out of the pool, enjoying a deep breaths of uh, the dank cave air. You hear rattling, the bones by the pool grind and snap together, several skeletons rise from the mud. Uh. This does not work. Uh oh. He's gonna get killed. You were here. To me. We need heals. Oh, doing a shield. I just do a quick, quick cast heal. No, he's dead. Okay, let's go buff up the party. He's about to die. Damn. Let's do second win. What lightning? Yeah, be building spectacle and everybody. It's kind of crazy. Are you gonna do it? Iconic projection. It worked. Doing out another consecrated ground seems good. What about you, Watcher? Essential Phantom. Seems to be a pretty unpopular skill. Okay, Scout of Sorcerer is dying now. Oh, you managed to uh, charm the Sorcerer. I guess we're gonna attack it. Let's 
So we can actually attack people who we charm, which is amazing. And they don't turn allegiance while they're getting attacked. Fine hide armor. Fine breastplate. Yeah, nothing particularly amazing. But hey. Max health? Ugh. What else we got? Slug zone. So I can go toward the city ruins or check out the scoop drag nest. That sounds good. Second. And anyway, guys, thanks for watching and see you next time.